Hello, welcome to uh, the consumer electronics class. Today we are going to see about video players. My name is Dr. Sakimutu. In the video players, we are going to see two different things. One is a DVD, another one is a Blu-ray player. DVD player and Blu-ray player. DVD player, if you take you know, DVD player, it was uh, not really that long ago that you know, there was a VHS tapes, you remember? That was dominating the home video market. But now, DVDs have all but wiped the, uh, the tape out completely. Nobody is using VHS tapes nowadays. Going from tape to disc gave the home theater experience. It's a major upgrade. But it assured in an era of uh, feature-packed special edition home video. So in this session, you will learn uh, what a DVD is made of, how a DVD player reads a disc, and the little DVD history and much more. Okay? DVD disc. So a DVD is very similar to the CD, but it has a much larger data capacity. A standard DVD holds about uh, seven times more data than a CD does. Seven times of CD. This huge capacity means uh, that a DVD has enough room to store a full length movie, MPEG2 encoded movie, as well as it can have a, a lot of other information. So I'll give you, you know, some typical content of a DVD movie. Uh, for example, you take high resolution video, high res 133 minutes of high resolution video that can be stored. That too in a, in a uh, pan and scan format which is 720 dots of horizontal resolution. 720 cross 576 uh, I can say. The video compression ratio is typically 40 is to 1 uh, using MPEG to compression. That's a one video. Or we can say soundtrack presented in uh, up to eight languages using 5.1 channel Dolby surround sound, Dolby digital surround sound. That's the second one. A third content may be subtitles in up to 32 languages. So all this is put together, we can have a DVD. Okay. So DVD can also be used to store almost uh, eight hours of CD quality music per side. What is it per side? We will see that. The, the formats, the DVD formats offer many advantages over uh, old VHS tapes. I can say DVD picture quality is better. But many DVDs have Dolby Digital or DTS sound which is much closer to the sound you experience in a movie theater. Okay. Many DVD movies have an on-screen index where a creator of the DVD has labeled many of the significant parts of the movie and sometimes with a picture that's called thumbnail. With your remote, if you, if you select the part of the movie you want to view, then the DVD player will take you to the right place to that part with no need to rewind or fast forward. You remember in tapes we have to use, uh, we used to do uh, rewind and fast forward. We don't do it. Video player, DVD players are compatible with audio CDs also. Some DVD movies have both the letterbox format which fits uh, widescreen TVs and some standard uh, TV size format. So you can, you, you can choose which way you want to watch the movie. You want to use a letterbox one or standard TV size, whichever way you can watch. DVD movies may have several soundtracks on them and, and, and they provide subtitles also in different languages. Foreign movies may give you a choice between the version dubbed into your language or the original soundtrack with the subtitles in your language. Either a dubbing movie or a subtitle with, a, uh, no, with its language. That is also possible. Next DVD layers. The DVDs are of the same diameter and thickness as CDs. It looks same. Same diameter, same thickness. 
and they are made using some of the same materials and manufacturing methods like a cd the, the data on a dvd is encoded in the form of small pits and bumps in the track of disc small pits and bumps bumps a dvd is composed of several layers of plastic a totaling about uh, 1.2 mm thick 1.2 mm thick each layer is created by injection molding polycarbonate plastic this process this process forms a disc that has a microscopic bumps arranged in as a single continuous and extremely long spiral track of data i will tell about the you know, more on bumps little later once the clear pieces of polycarbonates are formed once the clear pieces of polycarbonates are formed a thin reflective layer is sputtered onto the disc covering the bumps aluminum is used behind the inner layers but a semi reflective gold layer is used for the outer layers allowing the laser to focus through the outer and on to the inner layers after all of the layers are made each one is coated with the lacquer l a c q u e r each layer each layer is coated with the lacquer squeezed together and cured under infrared light look at the figure right hand side for a single sided disc the label is silk screened onto the non readable side for the double sided disc that are printed only on a non readable area near the hole in the middle you can see the cross section of the various types of completed dvds looks like you know right hand side that's a cross section okay now look at this figure now each writable layer of a dvd has a spiral track of data on a single layer dvds the track always circles from the inside of the disc to the outside that the spiral track starts at the center means that a single layer dvd can be smaller than 12 cm if desired what the image to, uh, you know here that cannot compress upon you impress upon you is how incredibly tiny the data track is it's i have given a very little wider but normally it is very very smaller just 740 nanometer separate one track from other a nanometer is 1 billionth of a meter okay and the elongated bumps that make up the track are each 320 nanometer wide a minimum of 400 nanometer long and 120 nanometer height i given the figure look at the figure now in this figure it's very clearly mentioned so 320 nanometer wide 400 nanometer long and 120 nanometer height okay that's a picture you see that you will often read about pits on a dvd instead of bumps they appear as a pits on the aluminum side but on the other side the laser reads from they are bumps the microscopic dimension of the bumps make a spiral track of a dvd extremely long if you could lift the data track off from the single layer of dvd and stretch it out outside into a straight line it would be almost 7.5 miles long that means that uh, double sided double layer dvd would have 30 miles or 48 km of data to read bumps this small you need a incredibly precise disc reading mechanism correct so what is a dvd storage capacity a dvds can store more data than cds for few reasons first one is high density data storage okay second one is less overhead more area third one is multi layer storage okay the first one is high density data storage 
the second one is less overhead more area third one is multi layer storage okay these are the three important you know uh, points reasons high density data storage what is that single sided single layer dvds can store about seven times more data than cds a large part of this increase comes from the pitch and tracks being smaller on dvds the track pitch is uh, cd is 1600 nanometer but here dvd 740 nanometers minimum pitch length you know in a single layer dvd in cd it is 830 nanometer but in dvd half 400 nanometers pit length minimum pit length double layer dvd in cd it is 830 nanometer but in dvd 440 nanometers let's try to get an idea about uh, you know how much more data can be stored due to the physically tighter spacing of uh, pits on a dvd the track pitch the track pitch the the track pitch on a dvd is 2.16 times smaller and the minimum pit length for a single layer dvd is 2.08 times smaller than cd by multiplying these two numbers we find that there is a room for about 4.5 times as many pits on a dvd so where does the rest of the increase come from less overhead more area on a cd there is there is a lot of extra information encoded on the disk to allow for error correction this information is really just a repetition of information that is already on the disk the error correction scheme that a cd uses is quite old and it is inefficient compared to the method used in dvds but the dvd format does not waste as much space on error correction enabling it to store much more real information another way that dvds achieve higher capacity is by encoding data onto a slightly larger area of the disk than that is done in cd that is about less overhead more area next one is multi layer storage to increase the storage capacity even more a dvd can have up to four layers two on each side the laser that reads the disk can actually focus on the second layer through the first layer here is a list of capacities of uh, different forms of dvds single sided single layer so what is the capacity 4.38 gb is a capacity that means you can store two hour movie single sided double layer two layers in one one side that will take 7.95 gb four hours movie time double sided single layer it can take 8.75 gb four and a half hours movie double sided double layer oh my god it is 15.9 gb 8 hours movie time so double sided double layer you may be wondering that you know why the capacity of dvd does not double when you add a sec whole second layer to the disk right this is because when a disk is made with uh, two layers the pits have to be little longer on both layers than when a single layer is used this helps to avoid interference between the layers which would cause errors when the disk is played okay now let's see about dvd video even though its storage capacity is huge the uncompressed video data of full length movie would never fit on a dvd in order to fit a movie on a dvd you need video compression a group called the moving pictures expert group mpeg he establishes the standards for compressing movie compressing the moving pictures when when movies are put on to a dvd they are encoded into encoded in mpeg2 format and then stored on the disk this compression format is a widely accepted international standard your dvd player contains an mpeg2 decoder which can uncompress this data as quickly as you can watch it the mpeg2 format and the data size reduction 
the MPEG-2 format and data size reduction. A movie is usually filmed at a rate of 24 frames per second. That's called 24 FPS. That means that every second there are 24 complete images displayed on a movie screen. But American and Japanese television use a format called NTSC, which displays a, a total of 30 frames per second. But it does this in a sequence of 60 fields, each of uh, which contains alternating lines of the picture. In other countries, uh, use, uh, other countries use PAL format, PAL format. That will display at 50 fields per second, but at a higher resolution. So, because of the differences in frame format and resolution, an MPEG movie needs to be formatted for either uh, the NTSC or a PAL system. The MPEG encoder that creates the compressed movie file analyzes each frame and decides how to encode it. The compression uses some of the same technology as still image compression does to eliminate redundant or irrelevant data. It also uses information from other frames to reduce the overall size of the file. So there are two different kind of you know, uh, uh, redundancy. One is a spatial redundancy, another one is a temporal redundancy. So spatial redundancy has been uh, exploited by intra-frame. That's called intra-prediction. Temporal uh, redundancy can be exploited by predictions, normal predictions. That's called P-frame or B-frame. So each frame can be encoded in any of the three ways. My first one may be intra-frame, second one is uh, P-frame or third one is a B-frame. An intra-frame contains, intra-frame, I-frame contains a complete image data for that frame. This method of encoding provides the least compression. Second one is as a predicted frame, as a P-frame, a P-frame contains just enough information to tell the DVD player how to display the frame based on the most rec recently displayed intra-frame or a predicted frame, just the previous frame. This means that the frame contains only the data that relates to how the picture is encoded or how the picture is changed from the previous frame. The previous frame will have a one hand and the second frame the hand is slightly moved. So it will tell you only the movement. Third variety is as a bidirectional frame. frame. That's a B frame. So in order to display this type of frame, the, the player must have the information from the surrounding intra frame or predicted frame. So which means the past and the future. Using data from the closest surrounding frames, it uses interpolation, something like averaging. It uses interpolation to calculate the position and the color of each pixel. Depending on type of scene being converted, the encoder will decide which types of frames to use. If a newscast were, were being converted, a lot more predicted frames could be used because most of the scene is unaltered, right? News reader from one frame to other frame, only lips will be reading, eyes will be blinking, that's all. On the other hand, if a very fast action scene was uh, converted, in which things change very quickly from one frame to a very next. So more intra frames would have to be encoded. The new newscast would compress to a much smaller size than the action sequence. Okay, if all of this sounds complicated, then you are you are starting to get a feeling that how much uh, work your DVD player does to encode or decode the MPEG-2 movie. This much is there, you will think. A lot of processing power is required. Even some computers with the DVD players cannot keep up with the processing required to play a DVD movie. Next, we will see DVD audio. A DVD audio and DVD video are different formats. DVD audio discs and players are relatively rare right now, but they will become more common and the difference in sound quality should be noticeable. In order to take advantage of higher quality DVD audio disc, you will need a DVD player with a 192 kilohertz or 24 bit digital to analog converter. Most DVD players have only 96 kilohertz and 24 bit DAC. But if you want to be able to listen the DVD audio disc, be, be sure to
to look for a DVD audio player with 192 kilohertz and 24 bit DAC 24 bit digital to audio converter okay DVD audio recordings can provide far better sound quality better than CDs I'll give you, you know, a small uh, one list okay this list says the sampling rate and the accuracy for CD recordings and the maximum sampling rate and accuracy for DVD recordings okay sampling rate DVD CD is 44.1 kilohertz DVD audio is 192 kilohertz samples per second CD audio will be 44,100 samples per second DVD audio 192,000 sampling accuracy CD will be 16 bit DVD will be 24 bit number of possible output levels CD will be 2 power 16 64,536 uh, output levels but DVD 2 power 24 that is 16 million 777 216 okay that many possible outputs it can generate so now I am coming back CD can hold CDs can hold 74 minutes of music but DVD audio disc can hold 74 minutes of music at their highest quality level that is 192 kilohertz with 24 bit audio by lowering either the sampling rate or the accuracy DVDs can be made to hold more music a DVD audio disc can store up to 2 hours of 6 channel better than CD quality that is 96 kilohertz 24 bit music okay lower the specification further and the DVD audio disc can hold almost 7 hours of CD quality audio in, in an audio CD or DVD each bit represents a digital command telling that DAC what volt, telling the DAC what voltage level to output while an ideal recording would follow the raw waveform exactly the digital recording sample the sound at different frequencies and therefore lose some of the data look at the graph graph above shows how the highest quality DVD audio compares to CD quality you can see that DVD follows the signal more closely DVD follows the signal more closely but it is still long way from perfect to get the full experience of the Dolby digital sound used on many DVDs you need a home theater system with the five speakers a woofer and a receiver we have studied about 3.1 5.1 right those are all uh, Dolby and a receiver that is either uh, Dolby digital ready or that has a built-in Dolby digital decoder if your receiver is Dolby digital ready then it does not have a Dolby digital decoder so you need to buy a DVD player with its own Dolby digital decoder and 5.1 channel outputs but if you also want your system to be comp compatible with the DTS sound then your DVD player will need a DTS decoder too if your receiver has, has its own Dolby digital decoder and DTS decoder then you don't need to you know uh, you don't need a DVD player with the 5.1 channel outputs and you can save some money on cables by using a digital outputs actually if you have your own digital uh, you know, decoder let's see how DVD players work a DVD player is very similar to a CD player with the laser assembly that shines the laser beam onto the surface of the disc to read the pattern of bumps the DVD player decodes the MPEG to encoded movie turning into a standard composite video signal the player also decodes the audio stream and sends it to Dolby decoder where it is amplified and sent to the speakers the DVD player's job is finding and reading the data stored as bumps on the DVD considering how small the bumps are the DVD player has to be exceptionally precise piece of equipment the DVD drive the DVD drive consists of three fundamental components the first one is the driver drive motor the second one is laser and lens system third one is a tracking mechanism so a driver or drive motor 
to spin the disc the disc is there right we have to spin it actually so the drive motor is precisely controlled to rotate the uh, disc between you know 200 to 500 rotations per minute 200 to 500 rpms depending on which track is being read the second one is laser and a lens system to so focus in on the bumps and read them the light from this laser has a smaller wavelength 640 nanometer it than a light from the laser in a CD player that is 780 nanometer this allows the DVD laser to focus on the smallest DVD pits third one is a tracking mechanism that can move the laser assembly so the laser beam can follow the spiral track the tracking system has to be able to move the laser at micron resolutions but inside the DVD player there is a good bit of computer technology involved in forming the data into understandable data blocks and sending them either to the DAC or digital to analog converter in the case of audio or video data or directly to another component digital format in case of digital video or data. To work properly the DVD player must focus the laser on the track of bumps. The laser can focus either on the semi-transparent reflective material behind the closest layer or in the case of a double layer disc through this layer and onto the reflective material behind the inner layer. The laser beam passes through the polycarbonate layer, bounces off the reflective layer behind it and hits on optoelectronic device which detects changes in light. The bumps reflect the light differently than the lens, correct? There is a bump. Bump reflect the light differently than the lens. The flat areas of the surface is called land. And the optoelectronic sensor detects that change in reflectivity. The electronics in the drive interpret the changes in reflectivity in order to read the bits that make up the bytes. The hardest part of reading a DVD is keeping the laser beam centered on the data track. This centering is the job of a tracking system. As a DVD is played, the tracking system has to move the laser continually outward, inside from inside to outside. As the laser moves outward from the center of the disc, the bumps move past the layer at an increasing speed. This happens because the linear and tangential speed of bumps is equal to the radius times the speed at which the disc is revolving. So the laser moves outward, the spindle motor must slow the spinning of the DVD so that the bumps travel, travel past the laser beam at a constant speed and the data comes off the disc at a constant rate. So you remember in the running race uh, you see the in a, in a stadium, people will be standing in different track, but inside track, the person who is running in the inside track, the person who is uh, running in the outside track should end properly. So in that case, what happens, you know, the starting point is different then. The end point is same, but the starting point will be different. So it is to manage the distance properly. So in the same way, here also it has been properly managed. An interesting thing to note is that if a DVD has a second layer, the start of that layer's data track can be at the outside of the disk instead of, uh, instead of the inside. This allows the player to transition quickly from one layer to the next without a delay in data and output because it doesn't have to move the laser back to the center of the disk to read the next layer. It's like a zigzag. Once it is end, then the next layer can start at the same place from outside and then it can come inside, it can revolve around and then it can come inside. Once it is inside, again third layer can start from inside and go outside and fourth layer can start from outside and then come inside. That's how it is. DVD player features. So supported few formats are the DVD movies, just about uh, DVD movies. It is just about all players play DVD movies. Second one is music CDs. Most players also play music CDs. Third one is video CDs. Some players can handle this format which is used mostly for music videos and some movies for, from foreign countries. 
Fifth, fourth one is uh, CDs. CDRs means CD rights. So some players can play content that you create on your own computer. Next one is fifth one is audio DVDs. A few player can handle this format for high quality audio. Other features. The first one is Dolby Digital Decoder. So this feature allows the DVD player to decode the Dolby Digital information from a DVD and convert into a six separate analog channels. This feature is not necessary if you have uh, if you have a Dolby Digital Receiver, which has a digital input that carries all of the audio information. It's the first one. Next one is DTS Decoder. This feature allows the DVD player to decode the DTS information from the DVD and convert into six separate analog channels. Again, this feature is not necessary if you have a receiver with a DTS decoder. Next one, DTS compatible. All DVD players are DTS compatible. They pass the digital audio information onto the receiver, which then decodes it. Fourth one, simulated surround. If you are going to hook the DVD player up to a TV or a stereo system with only two speakers, the DVD player with the simulated surround processing will give you some sense of surround sound without the extra speakers. Fifth one, disc capacity. Some DVD players can hold three or five or even several hundred discs. Since most DVD players can also play audio CDs, if you buy a player with a high disc capacity, you could store your whole CD collection in the machine. Sixth one, 96 kilohertz or 24 bit DAC. This is, this is the speed and accuracy of the digital to analog converter, which converts the audio information into analog channel, into analog signal. Most movie soundtracks are encoded in this format. So this is really a required feature and most DVD players will have at least 96 kilohertz or 24 and 24 bit DAC. Seventh one. 192 kilohertz and 24 bit DAC. This is an upcoming format for audio only DVDs that are recorded at speed up to 192 kilohertz and 24 bits. Only the newest DVD audio players have the 192 kilohertz 24 bit DAC required to play these audio tracks. Remote control type. A DVD players may come with the three types of remotes. First one is a dedicated remote. Second one is a multi-brand remote. Third one is learning remote. What is dedicated remote? This only runs the particular DVD player. Only that player. Multi-brand remote which can control other components like VCR, TVs man made by other manufacturers. Usually they only support the more common brands. Third one is a learning remote which can learn the signals from other remotes and assign them to a button. This feature is useful if you have an uncommon brand of component to control. Video and audio outputs. First, let's see video outputs. Component video outputs. So, what is that component video output? Component video outputs provide the highest quality video signal to your TV. But they are quite rare right now. Only the newest high end TVs can support them. But if you have such a TV, you will definitely want a DVD player with a component video outputs. How do we find out? There are three separate comp connectors for component video output component. Three separate one component. So it is a, a y, the R component, G component, blue component like that. Next one is S video output. These are common nowadays. S video provides a very good picture quality and every DVD player has at least one of these outputs. Next one is composite. Composite video output are the very common type type of output. What, how do we find out? See, normally you see that yellow color plastic uh, pin. That is called component. So they provide adequate picture quality. Usually they have a yellow plastic insert. That is video output. Now audio output. Coaxial digital output and optical digital output provide the highest quality audio. They send the digital sound information to the receiver for decoding. You, you can use either one of these if you have a Dolby digital receiver. Next one is 5.1 channel. 
I dot one channel is a set of six analog outputs. One one for each of the Dolby digital channels. Left front, okay. Second one is center front. Third one is right front. Fourth one is left rear. Fifth one is right rear. And sixth one is subwoofer. The DVD player decodes the Dolby digital signal and uses its own DAC to output an analog signal. These are the outputs you will need to use if you are hooking the DVD player up to a Dolby digital ready receiver. DVD receivers, DVD players with the 5.1 channel outputs will always have Dolby digital decoder. So, and they may or may not have a DTS decoders. If you have a Dolby digital ready receiver and you want a DTS sound, you will have to need a DVD player with a built-in DTS decoder. Third point is stereo outputs. These carry only the stereo music signal. You would use these if you were hooking your DVD player up to a TV that has only two speakers. Connecting the DVD players. So connecting a DVD player to your stereo receiver or uh, television if you don't have a receiver. That involves making two basic connections. One is audio and one is video. Let's see audio. The first connection to make is for the audio portion of the signal. There will be several options depending on the receiver you may have. The best choice if available is either to use an optical or also called uh, no, toss link or coaxial RCA digital connection. These two charges are equal in quality. In order to use either of these you will need to have both an output on the DVD player and an input on the receiver. Only receivers with the built-in Dolby digital decoders will have this type of input. Next point, if your receiver does not have an inbuilt uh, Dolby digital or digital decoder or DTS decoder, but it is if it is a digital uh, Dolby digital ready, then look for 5.1 channel Dolby or 5.1 channel DTS. This connection involves six cables corresponding to different speaker channels. Left front, center front, right front, left rear, right rear, subwoofer. Last point. The last option to connect the two components is with the analog RCA outputs. This is a two cable connection with one cable delivering the left speaker sound and the other cable delivering to the right. This connection will deliver only stereo sound but it may be your only option if you are hooking up directly to a television or if you have an old receiver with only two channels. This is about audio. Now let's see about video connection. The best quality choice is to use component connection. This connection consists of three cables, colored, uh, color labeled like red, blue and green. The quality is superb. However, these connections only exist on extremely high-end receivers and television sets. The next option is the S-Video. One cable connects the DVD player to the receiver in this setup. Last one is the last option is similar to audio setup is use the analog RCA video output usually color labeled yellow on both ends. This will deliver the lowest quality but will suffice for most older analog televisions. So that is about DVD. Now let's see about Blu-ray. Okay. How the Blu-ray disc work in 1997. 1997 a new technology emerged that brought digital surround and video into homes all over the world that is called in that is called dvd 1997 and it revolutionized the movie industry just like crazy but the industry is set for an, yet another resolution with the introduction of blu-ray disc bd in 2006 with their high storage capacity Blu-ray disc can hold and play back large quantity, quantities of high definition video and audio as well as photos, data and other digital content. So in this session, let's see how the Blu-ray disc works and how it was developed and we will see how it stacks up against some of uh, some other new digital video formats on the horizon. A current single sided standard DVD can hold 4.7 GB of information right that's about the size of an average two hour uh, standard definition movie with a few extra features but a high definition movie which has a much clearer image 
takes up about five times more bandwidth and therefore requires a disk with about five times more storage okay as tv sets and movie studios make the movie to high definition to a very high definition consumers are going to need playback systems with a lot more storage capacity with a lot more storage capacity okay blu ray is a next generation digital video disc blu ray it can record store playback high definition video and digital audio as well as computer data the advantage to blu ray is a sheer amount of information it can hold it can hold a single layer blu ray disc single layer blu ray disc which is roughly the same size as a dvd can hold up to 27 gb of data that's more than 2 hours of high definition video or about 13 hours of standard video a double layer blu ray disc a double layer blu ray disc can store up to 50 gb enough to hold about 4.5 hours of high definition video or more than 20 hours of standard video and there are even plans in the works to develop a disc with twice that amount of storage now let's see building the blu ray disc how to build a blu ray disc a blu ray disc overcomes a dvd reading issues by placing the data on top of a 1.1 mm thick 1.5 mm thick polycarbonate layer having the data on top prevents birefringence and therefore prevents readability problems and with the recording layer sitting closer to the objective lens of the reading mechanism the problem of disc tilt is virtually eliminated because the data is closer to the surface a hard coating is placed on the outside of the disc to protect it from the scratches and fingerprints the design of the blu ray disc saves on manufacturing costs traditional dvds are built uh, dvds are built by injection molding that's a 2.6 mm disc between uh, between which the recording layer is sandwiched the process must be done very carefully to prevent by fringes first one is the two disc are molded second step is the recording layer is added to the one of the disc third one is the two disc are glued together blu ray disc only do the injection molding process on a single 1.1 mm disc which reduces the cost that savings balances out the cost of adding the protective layer so the end price is no more than the price of a regular dvd blu ray also has a higher data rate transfer rate 36 mbps than today's dvds which transfers 10 G, 10 mbps a blu ray disc can record 25 gb of material in just over an hour and half one and half hours it will write okay so that's all about blu ray disc and today we have seen about dvd and blu ray disc so tomorrow or next class we'll see about other players okay Ca uh, camera digital camera we'll see about digital camera and we'll see about camcorders next class bye then